Every five years we, we cast our vote and with lot of hope we expect the government to perform and when our expectations are aspirations, the government has to understand. In a democracy, government's main responsibility is to serve the people. But unfortunately, though the, you know, the beauty of here, I, I have to explain a few points about democracy and then go a little further. The beauty of democracy is the democracy is the it is now increasingly being accepted. I uh, please follow my sentence. Democracy is now increasingly being accepted worldwide as the best form of government. There is no other alternative. We can't go back to one party dictatorship. Like former Soviet Russia or uh, you know communist China. No. We can't go back to one party dictatorship like Hitler or Mussolini. Or we can't accept a military dictatorship like most of the earlier, uh, you know, Southeast Asian countries or Pakistan. No. We are a democracy. We, have, we believe in self-governance. We want freedom. And freedom to talk, to express, to communicate. That is the reason we, we are allowed free newspapers. We are free to write our views in the editor's column. <coughs> Editorial, you know, reader's column. And if you wish, you can hold a press conference and talk to the media. Suppression of opinion is not there. But, but unfortunately, what happened, you remind me in my next class, after 1991, after the collapse of Soviet Russia, the corporates of the world, corporates are the the big industries, industries which operate in several countries simultaneously. And you know what is their member today? They are known as the Transnational Corporates, TNCs. Transnational and they are as on today, I am talking about only the TLCs, France, National, and okay? those corporates which are simultaneously operating in more than one country, which have already gone global. They are known as TLCs. And the world as on today has exactly one land. Corporates, TNCs, one lakh, hundred thousand TNCs. And there are some of the TNCs are extremely, uh, they have huge budgets. They, are, they, they produce medicine, they produce chemicals, pesticides, McDonald's, or food chains, mall chains. There are chains and chains and chains and chains. If you go to America, you will be shocked. America is supposed to be a free country. But everywhere you find only chain, 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 chain. Even for a barber shop, there is a chain. For a, uh, what we call washing, to wash our clothes, there is a chain. Everywhere it is uniform. Same in the uh, same corporate. You know, their units are there equally spread out in America. In terms of food, McDonald's, New York, McDonald's, Atlanta, or Florida is the same. Similar, similar activity is going to take place in already manifesting in this country. So friends, it corporates are now dictating terms. They are deciding the policies of the government. As a result, you know, as a result, because they have huge purchasing power. 
and developing countries, politicians, they always move with a name they put a board that is called Maruta. And on that board it is, I am for sale. Chief ministers and presidents and presidents of political parties, ministers, MLA, MPs. It's a very sad situation. But don't be discouraged. Human consciousness is increasing. Awareness is being built up. Knowledge is scaling up. Total information accessibility is increasing by leaps and bounds. Today sitting in your home, in your room, through the internet you can get connected to the world. Giving you, you take any topic, information is there. All that you need to have skills of analysis. Information under kare untari. Prati room la de internet na rasundari. Kani, one must have the skill to analyze and channelize that information so that you become effective. It's happening. Don't be discouraged. It's happening. That is why as we move into the future, it is not the government, but it is the citizens who is going to become more important in the days to come. Don't be afraid of any government. The master of the situation it is we the people. It is we the citizens, it is we the people who are going to be supreme and the world is moving in that direction. But to exercise that supreme power, you need to be informed. You must read the best books to try to understand the trends of the world. So friends, the second part of the report, WCED, it focuses on governance, governance. And here, once again, I repeat, in governance, the most important task of the government is, before the government is, to understand the rising aspirations of the teeming millions. That is one. Secondly, after assessing the aspirations of the people, then government will have to come up with public policies. Policies which will attempt to fulfill those aspirations. Have you got the point, please? First in the day, whether they have expectations of them just now. Secondly, those expectations have to be converted into public policies. And those public policies should be to fulfill the aspirations of the people. While the expectations from fulfill the share, and okay, you know, that is where we need to strike a balance. Yes, everybody wants development. But we have to organize development while protecting the environment. We need to, yes, the job of the government is to create. To create jobs, to create work. But at the same time to protect the environment because our right to life is connected with the environment. We cannot go on setting up industries and poisoning the water. Unfortunately, you have you ever paid to watch the Mosi, the most polluted river? There is in Medak, a small river known as Nakaba. And these two rivers from this particular region, they are now listed in the overall list of India's most polluted rivers. Right? Akavago and Mosi are now among listed in the in, in, in what is known as India's most polluted rivers. I don't know whether we can call it development. Total groundwater is contaminated. How is the next generation uh, uh, going to survive? What is its impact on the morbidity profile of the people of this country? What is the emerging disease profile? You know, when we were children, there was hardly any, hardly any cancer hospital. 
later on one maybe there was then cancer hospital government hospital came to be but today every every way is fine radio therapy and cancer treatment centers the huge cancer hospitals coming up and in punjab there is a cancer train a train which takes people to where this cancer treatment facilities are there in the morning trains leave from jalandhar from other places to such facilities because they, they have clusters of such treatment facilities you know why because punjab was one of the first states to go in for green revolution and there is so much of chemical and pesticide and several other factors work together it is only resulting in huge manifestation of cancer i don't know whether people are living or dying how, how do you describe the situation what is the scenario in in the command area of godavari district of krishna district excessive usage of fertilizers there is poison in everything in the water we drink in the food we eat quality of life is so poor on the roads of hyderabad i can describe every road as corridor of smoke and the industrial the industrial areas industrial areas like gili metra i all i have always often described gili metra by night with a gas station friends the situation is alarming therefore the second part of the report which is very important because people aspire to live in clean surroundings therefore the job of the government is to organize development while protecting the clean air and the clean water of the city okay that report also defined sustainable development I'm sure you would have heard the name sustainable development. It is the most important mantra. What is sustainable development? Good. This class is a very bright class, so that makes my job easy. Communication becomes easy when I have brilliant. brings sitting in the audience sustainable development is development which enables us to meet our needs that is we definitely we should have, we should be able to meet our needs therefore we have a right to organize development to meet our needs to that extent nobody is grumbling but how do we organize the development we have and what are the parameters we take into consideration while organizing development to meet our needs that is we should be constantly conscious of the fact that we are not at the last generation to be on this planet huh? life has to continue we have a responsibility yes we need to live therefore we have to develop but at the same time we need to be conscious of the needs of the coming generations and our organization should not incapacitate should not make it difficult for the coming generations to organize development to meet their needs because they also have the right to develop ana avasaral dheerale man vaavo ye tarala gurinchi kuda avasaram cheyali mana vetra yesthunna varu neelaina manandra ante ikkada meeru youngster ni kapple i'm talking about the contemporary generation we are all behaving as if we are the last generation to live on this planet as if there is no tomorrow in the selfish generation i don't think humanity has ever been this the last 50 years 60 years right people living for themselves constantly saving money wealth and nobody knows why they are pursuing they do not know the technology of 
the art of living. They have no goals in life. In the name of real estate, in the name of so many things, 100 crores, 1,000 crores, 5,000 crores, 1 lakh crores. And this money, friends, yes, everybody needs money only to fulfill their essential needs. But beyond that point, it becomes meaningless. Because this money is not transferable to the next year now. There is no guarantee whether we will be born again with this kind of memory. We should be knowing our background. Then what is the problem? So sustainable development. Now I come to uh, slightly later part of the lecture and I can assure you by 12.15 I saw it. So it was a time so. Right? I did not take my time. But I, I have a duty to perform. Friends, please I go back to you and again. After the World Commission report, the United Nations met and discussed the report. 1987, 88, they were constantly subcommittees, you know, going through every word of the report and they liked the report. They adopted the report. And then UN decided to organize a global conference once again. And this was organized in Rio, R-I-O, Rio de Janeiro. And where is this? Brazil. Brazil. And why was Brazil chosen? There is one very important reason and that is because of Amazon. What a wonderful forest it is and a river. The Brazilian forest. And what if the world's biggest forest, thickest, full of biodiversity. But unfortunately, that wonderful forest also is being destroyed. I can describe, I can go on describing the, the wonderful path, you know, forest and the rich biotechnology, bio biodiversity that it has. It can be described as the oxygen mask of the planet Earth. And the river Amazon carries so much of water into the ocean and the speed with which it enters the ocean for a hundred kilometers into the ocean, even the ocean water is fresh water. Called the river. It is Amazon water up to hundred kilometers. Any passing by a ship which is going that way, they can simply, you know, pump that water into the ship and start using it. Nature's gift. But then our Brazilians who are also equally are in a hurry to make some quick money. They have Walako Vairagyam yes and Malagare Monadi Adivida Park. Are Unna Veltanta forest and only but they don't understand. Only the seniors understand, but they are not effective. Today's youngsters in Brazil, they are, they are very, you know, bent upon destroying the forest. And they are, you know, a massive deforestation is taking place. And they are with modern, as I told you, you know, saws and everything. Heavy felling of trees and then they are clearing the forest, they are, they are clogging the field the forest area, converting it into grasslands. Then they are going in for cattle ranching, Ashuran Vesta. And they have set up huge slaughterhouses. And these cattle are, you know, after nearly two years, they are simply sent into the slaughterhouse to be slaughtered. And they make, then it becomes part of the, uh, you know, burgers. 
American KFC, or you know, all those things. They know like McDonald's, yes. all kinds of pizza, and the American diet. In addition to America, Europe, or the emerging contemporary world, that is our upper India, our IT sector, you go to IT sector in, in Gachibowli, this is the most preferred food. Okay. Yes, Brazilians also have a right to develop. But, but their concept of development is costing the world the beautiful Amazon ecosystem. With Netflix order, they want a wonderful ecosystem. Anyway, friends, this destroying the forest, converting the state into grassland, going in for cattle ranching, and setting up slaughterhouses, producing burgers, exporting it, and when they receive a few dollars, looking at the dollars the Brazilian thinks, yes, we are doing. But at what cost? So friends, this is the larger debate. I'll give you one example from India and then go back to the 1992 conference. In Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, you know, our border and Goa, we have huge deposits of iron ore. We are told it is huge, but in fact it is not huge. I use the word huge only because we are told it is huge. We have deposits of iron ore. And our politicians, of all political partners and the corporates, the big industries, they have, they started mining it and they, they were exporting it, right? And who was purchasing it? China, Japan, South Korea, South Korea and Iran. Of course, other countries all in. And then when our news, uh, you know, some of the journalists are uh, very inquisitive. They make a deep study of the problem. They trace what's happening to the iron ore which is moving out of India and where exactly it is going. So the, it is going to China and Japan and Korea as you rightly pointed out. But what are they doing there? They are simply dumping it on the shore. They are simply dumping it on the shore, right? A huge area has been allotted and the iron ore is being deposited there. They do not want to use it now. They have their own supplies. They will not use it now. Maybe after 50 years or 100 years. By which time Indian iron ore would have been exhausted. Now you tell me, friends, you are all very young. <laughs> Export of iron ore from a country as vast as India with such a massive population. Is it not a compromise on the needs of the coming generation? Do you approve this, uh, uh, this export? That is where I wanted to communicate. We are losing many things, friends. Our rivers are completely poisoned. We are losing the forest cover. What when India became independent, we had 33% of the area in the forest. By 1962, it had become 23%. And there after the government of India said, no, 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 we have to protect it, and therefore they declared it as protected. So now on paper, on paper, as a lay person when you look at the internet, you may get the feeling India has 23% of its area under forest. But in reality you enter any forest and I can tell you that there is not a single big tree left. All the huge you know, trees which were there for hundreds of years have been cut. And you can see their remains in the in the houses of the richest of the rich. Their full wardrobes are made of wood. Their huge dining tables 
got it uh, everything including throwing. I simply don't understand why we should destroy the forest and have done this kind of election. You were influenced again. Is it necessary? At what cost? And that is affecting the climate in this country. We used to have wonderful rainfall. But Nalamala forest is completely destroyed. And therefore, Mahmood Nagar is dealing under drought. Adilabad, the, the tree, the big trees are you know, vanished. Only the, all that you have is you know, slops and shrubs. Well, vegetation that comes into being automatically because of the rainfall and the dispersal of the seeds. But they are not allowed to grow and become big. And who is destroying the forest? The forest contractor plus who and he is helped by the forest officer. Forest officials plus contractors, the local politicians, local rowdy men, rowdies, other men, they all come together and they take away what belongs to the people. The common property of the people of this country is being looted by a nexus of the forest contractor and the forest officer and the local police and the local politicians. Same thing is happening in Andhra Pradesh when it comes to sand. <coughs> I know you come from different areas and you are, every area has this sand mafia. I went to the Supreme Court and bought a stay. There was a ban on sand mining. They wanted the government to implement it. Government had no choice but to show that it is implemented. But all governments are cheating the people. They are hand in glove with the mafias. Because there is so much of money. Everybody, you know, in that system, corruption is like freezing. The modern state missionary Narvalade Motan freezing it. Such a missionary Narvalade is such a Oiling. Corruption is like the oiling. Friends, these are major issues. Uh, with, with, with. I now go back once again to the, to the Rio Conference and after Rio Conference. The, what was Rio Conference? Rio Conference was the biggest conference of the world on the subject of Denmark. Massive, unsubjective conference, Malagade. It is also known as the Earth Summit. Earth Summit. And they, they adopted one Agenda 21. In Agenda 21, it was for a very short period of seven and a half years. At this conference, you know very well, it was in June 1992. Another important date, please note down. Rio Fountain, June 1992. Again on the same day, June 5th. Okay? They, they adopted a, a package of practices for the nations of the world to follow. A package of practices to be followed by the governments of sovereign countries in the world. And prepare the, prepare the world to enter the 21st century on an environment friendly note. Friends, I repeat it. Agenda 21 is a package of practices that is things nations of the world should be doing in order to prepare the, their respective countries to enter the 21st century or the enter the new millennium, right? On an environment friendly note. You got the point? Now, not satisfied with that, United Nations started two big streams of dialogue. One on global warming and climate change and the other on biodiversity. And the 
Melbourne has been organizing local conferences alternately every year, one year long global warming, 